Hi everyone, welcome back into uh, the classroom. We're continuing on with our bird study, our bird challenge, and of course I've had a lot of requests for cardinals, finches, and of course more hummingbirds. We'll do those as well. Today I thought it might be kind of fun to do uh, this cardinal. This is a photo I bought from uh, Adobe Stock Photos. Uh, there's lots and lots of free ones out there. The the male cardinal and the female. I love painting the female cardinal more than the male because, you know, solid color birds, yeah, they're really bright and nice and um, but I, you know, I, I like to have a lot of color movement in them. But I'm going to paint this one because the male is very, very popular. I have I have painted the male and the female several times as grouped pairs and stuff in different books. I have a lot of books on painting birds and stuff and videos. I have an entire series of video called Summer Birds. And um, so I've done them all in there, especially the female and stuff, which I really like. But we're going to do that. And I was thinking maybe next time we'll do uh, one of the finches, one of the uh, um, goldfinch, American goldfinch. All right. Okay. Oh, also this uh, painting here, I'm right in the middle of recreating this painting. This is a painting I did about five years ago for myself, um, for my office uh, at my place out in Pennsylvania. And uh, a bunch of my students have asked for it, have been asking for it for a number of years if I would go ahead and paint it. And I am recreating it a little bit larger because it's going to go, I brought it out here so I can paint it, but uh, it's going to go into this building, which is quite a bit bigger. Okay, so it's going to be a little larger. So I'll watch for that into the future there. I call it Heading to the Light. It is a, a bottom trawler. Um, I know these fishing boats well. I grew up. Uh, in the fishing uh, fishing port and uh, watch these ships and stuff go out all the time but I call it heading to the light leaving the storm heading there so if I do it a little bigger I can make more storm and it's going to be a lot a lot of fun anyway okay let's go uh, into this uh, into this bird here I'm painting him up bigger I'll set him right up here for a second I'm painting him up bigger this is a 12 by 18 you don't have to go this big but I had this board and I'm doing some landscapes uh, in one of my classes the art of seeing we're going to be doing some different uh, different types of uh, landscapes water movement studies and stuff and I thought it would be fun to put him on here maybe a, a little bit more negative space maybe try to you know I started that one bird out with the lattice and then I ended up covering most of it up so maybe we'll try to put some of the lattice in here with this with some of his uh, uh, some of his movement. I just sketched an oval this way and then I turned an oval this way because his head is so high and then I refined his line from there that's how I put it out and I'm not sure yet like normal I'm not sure yet about what we're going to do flowers. Okay contrast wise if he is a red to red orange uh, a good a good blue to use would be our thalo blue uh, as for a contrast here. So I have my classic palette out here. This is my Hansa yellow, Darty light yellow, yellow oxide, naphthol red light, burnt sienna, thalo blue, pine green, red violet, uh, excuse me, quinacridone violet, red violet, and white. And I have a little extender out here as well. I think I'll use a bit of it this morning. Nice dirty extender in my dirty brush that I was just painting with. So... It, it's all a toner, so it all works. It'll all work. So I'm going to take some white and a, just a touch of that thalo blue, a very powerful color. But it's a thalo blue is a blue-green as opposed to your, um, your ultramarine blues and stuff that are more of a blue-violet. And uh, so a blue-green, a nice light blue-green would really contrast him quite nicely. Let's drop that down just a bit bit of extender. I'll put a bit of extender in here so it stays wet for a few minutes. I'm just going to move some of this around. You know me, I like casual movements of color. Um, I'm very much, I for years and years and years, for over, well, for over 20 years of my painting career, I was very much a strict realist and, and decorative painting folk artist and stuff, and then I moved more into Impressionism. I like that. I like the freedom of the brushwork and brush calligraphy and stuff, so I like some of that. And we all change, don't we, as artists? We we all change. What we like now may be different than what we started out with. 
it's, and it's an evolution. Okay, I'm going to back out, just tap with a damp paper towel here, just a bit of my bird so I don't have to re-sketch him again. And then I, uh, so Thalo Bloom White, most of the power going this way because he is going this way. And what does that make? What have I told you that makes? St. Andrew's Cross, right? So that's what I like to do. And now I'm just going to pull down an Impressionism. Take my paper towel and run right through that here of what would be uh, kind of like a lattice work here. Maybe turn the brush on the chisel. That would give you more streaks. Streaks add interest. So you got to be careful. We don't want to take away from the bird. I'm, and But I just might add a few marks of this. And let's let some of this just fade off here to the side. Even take it off there so it's not quite so perfect. And let's just pop one right back here. Take it out of the bird. Here, that, that might be more than enough. Just an idea of lattice. I, you know, and I get really super casual later on. So, you know, that's that's just all going to cover up and stuff. Hopefully, let's uh, while we're here working that, let's take a little pine green and some burnt sienna. I love that as a nice start. And let's lighten that right into some of these blues and stuff. And let's push a little bit of that around here. Let it model and mix up with that blue. You see, I, I like that when I put that blue with extender on, and then I do what I call blur it. I don't blend it, I blur it. Blur the harder edges off, and um, sometimes I'll add more extender and make it really loose, especially as I come out here. So out on the edges, which you can barely see, but it's a long board here. Just run these edges out and let all of that just kind of disappear. And uh, that will work. Let's push a little bit back here. Maybe some of that sitting over. If I'm not too careful, I'll eliminate all of this lattice like I did on the last one. So we want a little bit of it to show because it is kind of interesting. There, like that. And, um, of course, he's going to be red. So, you know, flowers that you can have with him. White, yellows, a little bit of red. You know, maybe some soft pinks that would go with him. Let's do a bit of that. A bit of that uh, pink, a nice pink is naphthol red light and the quinacridone, some white. We'll toss it right into the blue here. And uh, let's just push a bit of that around here. I want to show different colors all the time to show you, show all of you some different ways of painting and, and stuff. But this will help us move color. And we can change it more white or to some more yellows or something like that later on. But I'm just going to look for some soft colors that will help move him, move some of these colors out. And I'm not painting flowers or anything. I'm just moving color, that's all. I don't want to cover up all my blue. I don't want to cover up all my green. I'm not even sure of the flowers yet, but I just want to move some of this color around here. And we can take back out, you know, sometimes, and this is a good thing to remember too. So I work edges back and forth. And whenever you set something up like this, see, it's got kind of, you know, this is my left brain coming in here. I tend to go like that. And so a lot of times what I'll do, I'll put a little extender back in my brush here is I'm going to take a little more blue and white a lot many times I go back and revisit some of my other colors right right back through that again and what that does see how that just blurs and lightens up everything and it takes it away from being uh, too perfect here and I might just restate some of this lattice work here again but what it does is you know it blurs your edges i'm a i'm very much aware all the time of my edges and my problem you know when i wanted to be more casual as an artist was i spent so many years in decorative painting where we would fill in and make patterns and make everything perfect and so i i like the fracturing or the breaking up 
what I call in a lot of my videos the modeling of color. The, the colors model through here so you get all these different looks and I like that and that helps me you know really uh, put in the form that I want to have the bird. Okay I'm gonna go I'm gonna paint a lot of him with the four and I'm gonna look when you go look at here you know there is some nice changes. There's a nice cooler red back here, cooler red. This is cooler, more toned. Um, and then this is cooler, nice bright orangier red here. And of course it goes up to his beak. And so I'm gonna start there. I, I, I'm gonna start now. I know many times I start with the darker undertone, but oranges and stuff are sometimes hard or to bring back on top of red, especially if you cool it. So I'll start with lighter warm this time when I go to paint this guy. So I'm gonna take some some uh, Hansa yellow and some Darulite yellow here, and I'm gonna start in his beak. Now see, that's the yellow. So usually if I see a lot of yellow in a, in a painting or a yellow orange into a painting, I'll attack that area first. And then I will go to my deeper reds. So I change, you know, depending on the bird and stuff, I change. Now I'm gonna make this slightly orange. We're gonna to look to where that real orange kind of color is. And I wanna keep it orange here for a minute as I go to base this in. Keep this really light and orange and maybe just a touch more red. So naphthol red light, the, uh, the uh, Hansa yellow, and some uh, Darulite, just kind of modeled up into there. And we'll just pull some strokes. Try not to do too many times there, Dave. You do too many times, it all becomes one color. And I do like modeling, modeling the color, moving color around and not mixing. I, you know, I used to always mix, now I don't. I like to model and get different colors going. Okay, now let's go back up to more red. We identify, so what I tried it, well, let me first put up, there's a bit of that right up here. He's going to have a black band and then a little bit more orange. I see a little bit more orange right up in here that could go right up along his eye, right up in there, right like that. Okay, now, now we'll go we look for so when i'm when i'm painting him and i got to go orange what i do is i look in each area see how this area here's more orange here this whole top part of his head is darker and a little cooler but there's a little bit of that almost just and you can see it on my brush naphthol red light maybe a little bit of orange right in there before it goes up to the cooler color so if i'm going to paint any of that see once i go to this red it takes out that orange really quick and uh, they will Oranges are just not powerful colors. So I tend to paint them early on in the paintings. Then we'll give him some ruffly head feathers here. I can streak back through there, but see it has no power. See it's already lost its power, that orange, because I put that red on and it takes so much to try to get it up there. Usually te uh, a lot of texture um, to get that red back in there. Okay, so you remember that about your red. So as you're working your reds, a lot of times when I paint reds, I paint their warmest, lightest that I see first and then work down through the cools and then the cool darks and tones here. So I set those lighter warmers as the undertone here and then I go down. And let's go, let's take the yellows. Now these are, are really nice yellows to use. The yellow oxide would work but it's really opaque and uh, so I don't want to do that yet. So I'm going to add a bit of that. Try to stay out of that black band. So you pick up some of those reds, red oranges here. And so everywhere I see it, kind of a lighter red orange, I want to push that in first because I can always, always make it darker but you cannot always lighten it up. It's not easy. You can, but it's not easy. And I tend to paint things for easy, okay? So we'll push that in. Let's grab some more red now. Let's go more red. 
right down through here just nap the red light which is a red red orange here push that in and I lost all my sketch so I'm winging it now there we go let's push some more of that red right up here boom look how bright that looks now that's nice oh I like that lifting off that worked pretty nice let's uh now there's also going to be this nice gray color here really it's kind of a blue gray color grayed into the reds um kind of difficult to do uh you know if you uh get too much gray in there so i'm going to come this way a little bit of the pink color i used earlier a little blue a little white and uh pink and let's push in some of that gray and of course the more white you have into the color the easier it is easier it is to push it in because the white is opaque at least in the heritage let's put it that way in the heritage it's opaque because it's not opaque in some acrylics it all depends and we'll push out through here there we go, we'll push some of that color in here. And uh, that'll work out pretty nice. Now, so I got some nice warms up through here. I'm gonna set some dark, some of my blacks in here now. And uh, that's gonna actually make my reds look more red and I wanna see what that looks like. I'm gonna take some, I don't have black on my palette, so I'm gonna make really a dark violet. When I gotta go to a black, I go to a really dark violet. Sometimes I'll use, a little bit of uh, you know blue with some um, bit of that naphtha red light but see it goes really dark really cold and uh, that's kind of what I want in there and a lot of impressionists not all I would I, not not all of, oh, matter of fact sergeant one of the guys I follow more than anything else he used black on his palette but not a lot of today's impressionists use black because it's too dead of a color so I'm just going to pull that out there like that. I might put a little highlight shine into some of that. We're going to go right up here towards his eye. I'm going to do short, just kind of contour following strokes here. You can flip over and use a smaller little brush too, but I use just a corner of my brush, just a corner of my flat. And if you have an old flat that's all worn up a little bit that works great because see it gives a little bit of feathering there and they work pretty good that way i want to leave some of that eye ring paint that around let's get a bit darker right up here maybe a stroke pull down a little different brush work than i did earlier okay so we'll set that in that sets a nice dark now we could while we're there Let's take some of this, let's add a little bit more red violet and let's add a little bit of red to it to make a darker, darker purpley kind of red color here. And uh, let's go in, he's got a big tertiary color or tertiary um, feather right there. Maybe just a bit of green into that, which will gray it back again. See how grays it back again, dirties it back? And this is what I like to do is, you know, I, I like to use multiple colors on birds and stuff. So, you know, they pick up more interest. Now, I made his body a little bit wider, a little bit fatter uh, back here than what I saw in the photo. So I'm just going to take some a stroke of that dark, then a stroke of that red like that. Okay, so you, what you see is all of this. It's kind of red and dark, so I will paint them both back and forth. So I'm going to take some some dark and pull out like this, pull a few streaks and stuff, hit some of that light, then we'll take some of that red and pull right down through that as well while it's wet. Don't do too much there, and we'll just start modeling up his. Let's put a little bit of green into that again start modeling up some of these feathers here through these colors 
and pull down this way. Notice the calligraphy. I pull this way and pull down, changing the calligraphy from what I'm seeing on the wing. Which way do you, which direction do you see the feathers going? That's the direction you have to follow. We're bird painters today. That's the direction. Go. Now on his big primaries here, you can, you know, set up quite a bit of detail to it, but I don't. I, you know, like I do with the others, I like to use the chisel and kind of push it flat a little bit so I don't get perfect lines. Sometimes on some birds I do them more precise, um, but uh, you know I, it all depends on the bird. But I usually don't because I don't like to uh, you know put too much emphasis on the primary flight feathers. I like it up around the head of the bird. To me, that's the story of the bird, so I like to do that. Change that a little more green. Just pull through here. I'm going to blur this tail off, but we got to get some red in there, too. Let's get a stroke of red. Maybe red with a little orange in it here. Just get a bit of that orangey color. See, I like that. Nice little mottled color there. And uh, here for his tail. There, just like that. See, that just gets some interest. Got just ends up with just a little bit of that red, maybe a touch of the light feathering there on the tip of his tail. Here, just like that. Back to that gray, that little blue, and some of that pink color. Reset some of those gray colors into here. Tap through just a bit. Boom, right into here. Pull down, just follow the contours of his body. Follow the contours of his body. Okay, matter of fact, I can set that over here a bit. Maybe if I push this underneath, it's kind of, I kind of like you to see the photo so you can kind of see what I'm doing. You know, and if I ch decide to change an area, you can see that pretty clearly. But I don't always, you know, if I want something super casual, if I, you know, for myself, I don't always copy an area, you know, a lot of precision. So here I've got a lot of violet. Do you see that? And here it's violet and, and red modeled. So I just lightly model through that a little red, and I'll put some of that color in there, get it closer to what I see in the bird. I also have that back area of his back back there. I'm going to take a just an edge of blue, just run right on top of that and push, and that will blur out his back edge there. See that? And that will cause him to do, uh, to, um, to get lost. And I started doing that, oh, I started doing that several years ago when I was uh, studying, and it's a technique that was, that really, Leonardo da Vinci made really pos uh, really popular, um, and how he did it on the Mona Lisa. And then when I was over in the Louvre and I had an opportunity to study the Mona Lisa, um, the, uh, and he used a technique called sfumato, which is, a, it, it, it's basically a, a, a light glaze, or it's a blurring of the line you know, of the flesh tones to the background. And uh, it was very, very interesting, and I got to study a little bit more about the technique. And so that's what really started me to do a lot of things like this on the back of the birds, to bring the forward part of the bird forward. You know, I call it a lot of times lost and found edges, but it's a technique where you take the background of it right over the edge of the bird, and then I blur it. And that's that's closer to... Sumato, which um, is, and that's, if I can remember right, it's S, uh, S U F M A T O. M A T is close. <laughs> I have to look it up. I haven't written it down for several years. This, we're going way back. You know, it was, uh, you know, way back. And so, but it's a, it's a great technique. See what it does here blurs that back and goes there. So sometimes, you know, it's the nice thing about having all these techniques. I mean, they're up here in your toolbox and you just kind of pull them back out every once in a while. Something's not working. 
then I, I don't just try things. I slow down and I go, okay, what do I have in my toolbox that I have done that I can bring back to fix that area? And I start running it through. I start imagining what it'll run through. But see, that just gives a lot of nice interest back there. And it'll look great up here when we start to really start our our cooler colors. Well, before we go do that, let's go give him an eye. I'm going to flip back over to my um, to my number four round, my birding brush, and yeah, I'm going to tap in that little warm. Remember, I like that little bit of warm. Let's take the blue, a little green, and a little red violet here. Make a real dark get that eye. Now, I'm probably going to have to um, expand his eye ring. You don't see much of an eye ring there. You see a little bit of a gray, but really not too much. So I'm going to use a light, a softer gray, kind of tap that around. The eye ring, I love the eye ring on birds, and if they don't have one, I generally tend to put one in, because I like it. So, you know, and it's... Uh, gives a lot of them a lot of interest or life you know and so i will generally tap that around i guess that so i'm going to tap that around i'm going to go into the eye just a bit and uh, so like with this guy he's going to have a uh and i'll take that down in just a minute but he's going to have a catch light right up here the shine what we call it in decorative painting the shine portrait painters and stuff call it the little catch light and I generally like to put a little catch light on the eye ring somewhere, sometimes up into the very front, right up through here. So I'll put a, a, just a smaller little catch of it, and then that makes his eye just sparkle a bit more. Now let's take that dark, and we'll just start easing into that just a bit to uh, reduce the amount of that light eye ring, because he really doesn't have a lot of light up there. And we start to get a nice eye. Now he can talk to us a bit more. And he tells us that he needs some cooler red color now. So let's just go right into our violety kind of color here with our red. And we'll stroke a bit of that. Now that's just a touch dark. Let's go a bit more red. And see, I like to just pop that in. And then I'll push that around and... And let those colors, let, you know, I paint for movement. You know, there's some birds that I'll just paint a lot of feathering, and then there's some that I'll paint for movement. So I'll put that on. We'll drop some red, which is coming this way onto his head. There. And uh, now I have a bit of extender in here, so it's going to stay wet for a few minutes. So. I don't want to, you know, it doesn't need to stay wet for a long time, but just for a few minutes while I put the dark down and then I paint into it with the with the naphtha red light there and then I can push just a bit and I get some more interest into the uh, feathering that way. And these just kind of turn, sometimes go all the way to the outside, sometimes let that stay the original base color. Maybe we can push around some not quite orange, but lighter color here. Right up towards that eye a bit more, closer here. There's just a kind of a band of dark, and some of the finches have it, they have it right there before it goes down into that lighter cheek, which I'm going to hit with that. Keep orange in my brush, so I'll just hit that a few times there. So that that comes out a bit more on him. I always think that these guys, I just, <laughs> they have such a huge beak, you know. We had lots and lots of these cardinals at our place out in Pennsylvania. And, uh, I mean, lots of them. And especially in the winter time, and the snow on the trees. We have all these hickory trees and the snow on them. And they just stand out in their reds. Just, you can spot them from miles away. They're just beautiful but, uh, so I'll do that and we'll so the see it's easy to paint that orange if the orange is already underneath there you don't see it very much if you have red underneath there so 
we can make sure I keep that orange for just a bit by just adding a touch of that orange into as I add some of these colors into my reds, my naphtha red lights in them, so I get that nice warmer tone in there. So anytime that you're painting those real lights, you know, light colors, uh, you know, those uh, real warm reds, it's really better to start out with the oranges and then paint down. So you start light and then paint down into your darks. And um, at least that's what, with most of the techniques, I don't do it all the time, but with most of the painting things, that's what I like. A little more red up there on this top cap, a little more red right through here. Let's get a nice dose of red so the viewer sees a nice, you know, I like to do that on the, them is to like give a nice stroke of some red. The whole bird doesn't need to be red, but if I have a couple of real heavy strokes, and I'll see, I'll put some right up in here. Just nice naphtha red light. Let's put a stroke of this, that naphtha red light right in there. Push that up just a bit. But see, he reads now more red. Be just He doesn't need it everywhere. He just reads now more red because we've added that. Let's put some of that red, red purple right down here. Let that model just a bit there. I like that kind of modeling interest in the, I'm going to add just a touch of extender here. Maybe just a bit of that, just push out here. And you know, we might lose that back edge. So we might take some of this nice edge this way like that, and then push up into it and get that nice fumato edge there, losing of that edge. It's an interesting technique. Those of you that you know haven't studied some of that you might go take a look at that. It's fun, fun kind of. And it gave a um, he was known for it. It gave kind of a cloudy look to it. And so when I started to paint that a, a lot, you know, like 20 years ago, I started after started using it a lot and learning it. Um, I used a lot of of uh, medium white colors on the edges of stuff to break up that. Okay, into our oranges here. Oranges and some red. Let's put some of that right up on the top of his beak here. We'll let some of that yellowy color sit there into the center. We'll go just a bit darker up at the top. Use just the chisel here. Push just a little bit. Let's come down more orange and stuff down here on the bottom. Push that through, a little modeling there. A little more red, maybe a little violety color into it. Let it go dark as it's going right into his body there. But let it stay, let it stay a little bit modeled. Okay, I might um, take, now uh, to get up on top of that orange, I'm, I'm gonna add a little bit of the yellow oxide and then I'm gonna lighten it up. Now that's gonna give me a, yellow oxide will help me give me an opaque yellow. That will now, I can use for some detail lines here. See the opaque yellow, opaques out the, the underpainting there. And uh, then I can take that, let's soften that with a little bit of Darulite and just Darulite and Hansa and pull that over and that'll just soften that right into the rest of the beak there. Maybe just a touch here to the low side we have there. A little bit of light orange here pulling down. There like that. You can also do it in dark or you can switch from the light to the dark just to get some some interest there. And I will generally go back and forth a couple of times. I'm going to add just a touch of extender here. I like the way it slides. So I don't want to make that too smooth, but I want a little more coloring into that. Soften out that edge a bit. Color depth. Boy, I really like that push back there. That really came out nice. I mean, it looked like I knew what I was doing. So I'm going to 
take some burnt sienna and some red, a little bit of red violet, and uh, we'll kind of put in the idea of his legs there, and uh, over to some burnt sienna here. I'm going to keep these just really lost here. And I probably won't do the feet, the end feet on it. Here, put a little light orangey color right there. So it gives him like a bit of a thigh. Walk that up just a bit. So, do you want more? You know, I see I, I painted the whole bird here and got this nice depth, you know, deep color, coloring on him without any white into any of those reds and what that does is um, you know it just keeps it from going pink let's put it that way okay keeps it from going pink so that that worked out pretty much and, that, and maybe a little bit of the touch here will retouch just a bit of the lights just a little of these light grays Let's add just a few of those. I don't think I'm going to do too much to those flight feathers, but there is more red on his primaries than I have here, so I probably want to push that in. Maybe a little red-orange here. And this will go on pretty soft because I'm going over the dark, and it doesn't have too much power against the dark, so it'll be a little softer I you know you and that's a good reason to start out with more orange you know before you get those cool colors in there because see the tendency now would be oh I need to lighten that up you know help it opaque up and stuff the problem there is it's going to go pink on you second you add white you're going to go pink so you know it's better to underpaint it with a lighter yellow or if you need to lighten it up underpaint it with its white or, or a light pink and then you're going to have to glaze back up on top of it because uh, you know you don't want that pink to show but this is going to work out okay so I wasn't I wasn't too dark not quite dark enough so I'm okay just to get some of that color in there and uh, let's get just a bit of that reverse and then a little bit of red violet a little bit of blue we'll get that nice backside darker feather there just push that in again maybe a little red right through the center of it just like the photo there boom and a little darker tone pulling down this way sets those coverts there and that's kind of nice and he doesn't really have you know I like to fold feathers you know back up over the edge is one of my little signature doesn't have a whole lot right there so I'm going to give him some just a little bit of light you've seen me I fold body feathers over the end of the wing so he doesn't really have it there but you know what he's my bird I'm painting him so I'm going to do this and this is just one of the little signatures that I have on them that I like to do now that eye ring is a bit big so I'm going to take my flat and just paint right up with some violet right up next to it there just back it out just a touch there so it doesn't look like a but he still looks happy enough that's what I want so I'll back it out mostly there towards the front there we go and that's pretty good I kind of like that I could take a bit of that nice violet and just run it right into his legs there and uh that will get closer to his legs, close enough for me for right now. Maybe just a touch, just brighter red. Let's just give him a touch back there. And just leave that brighter little red there. And um, I got a nice little bump there. I don't know what I was thinking when I based that in there. So I'll just put a little color there and push right through smooth that off a bit 
And even, you know, I used to worry, like, I got a little red, dirty finger red right up there. And I used to worry about that, and, if it, and I don't anymore. I just let it happen. That's this good color. Okay, let's go back. Let's go grab a good painting brush here. Whoa, left some uh, paint into this one. And those of you that haven't seen it yet, I used the hand sanitizer because it has the alcohol in it and uh, takes out. No, oh, we left green in it. That's what we left in it. And uh, as long as you have 60% alcohol, get closer to 70, it's better. But that takes that right out. That's the nice thing about the acrylics like this. The, the pure solvent after they're older like this is, you know, alcohol or your today's hand sanitizers work perfect there. And now my brush is back good again. Okay, so we're going to do some light uh, pinky orange maybe here and white will go kind of like a pinky orange to white kind of flowers here so I'm going to add just a bit of the light we'll do a nice variety here kind of multi-petal blossoms here I'll leave that pink now we'll go to a more orange a nice warm orange right around in here and uh, see, I'm just brushing the color. I'm not making the flower shapes yet. I'm going to make the flower shapes with my white. And then I can negative paint around them. And uh, so we'll make the flower shapes in just a minute. But let's uh, get some of that right up next to his body here. You want to do that. You want to paint through them. Because then it, if you don't, it looks like you've painted to avoid them. And we don't want to avoid them. Now, we'll slide this over. Let's add a little bit more yellow, like some Hansa yellow and some white. Okay. We're going to make like little blossoms here. Let's work up closer to him here first. Boom, like, like that. And then let's blur it a bit. So it's got a little bit of blurred edges and stuff on him. Add a little extender, keeps it wet, but it uh, also allows, gives me a few minutes to blur out these edges here. So whenever I do a, a petal that is, it has a little more structure to it, I always do the petals that are closest to, to the bird, to your subject. So this side I would leave pretty blurred out. This side I might put a you know, a better hit of light or more edge, more of an edge, a found edge here. Not so much sfumato. And I hope I say that right. Let's just put a, well, that was not very good, so let's just blur that out. A little too solid here. So I basically, as I start to come out through here, I start to just have the color now we want to touch some of that color even back through here so that you know that you see that color going through him there. Let's come back up over here to the back and turn one. So I do some long ones out like this and then pull right across the front. That gives you the like the edge of the petal and it helps turn the blossom at the same time, turns it but we might want an edge right here that's closer to him. So you see a bit more of that edge, that blossom right there. And that's kind of pretty. Let's go a bit more of our yellows. Kind of collide them up a bit here. You can edge up, touch more. Anything over towards him. Let's put some pinks into that. Some oranges. Let some of that just start to fade away here. Goes further back. It's kind of pretty. You know, sometimes just doing two or three around him is kind of nice. Even with a long board like this, you know, doing just a couple is kind of nice. Turn them. Make you paint more of an oval if you want them to turn. We talk all about that in the S105 and stuff and turn in some of our classes of turning blossoms. How do you turn them? 
and uh, here we go we'll maybe just a few marks let's just get this very thin we we'll even green it out a bit here so the colors start to fade away so we get that lost ghost I love it. I paint the ghost flowers and stuff. You know, that's where I, I call the ghosts. They get really soft, transparent, but they're not really transparent. The value, the tonal, the tone becomes very much like the background. And so many people just like, like some of my greatest long-term painting friends go, I just love your ghost flowers. Well, that's great, but I painted some really pretty roses in the front, <laughs> you know, but they go, oh, I love your ghost flowers. It's kind of depressing sometimes when they like their ghost flowers better than your regular roses and stuff. But ghost flowers are kind of fun. You know, you put them out here like this, they look kind of soft and and nice. And you just kind of blur them out. And yeah, as they just kind of fade away out there like that, that's kind of nice. You know, now you can take some of this color a little bit more... Uh, I'm going to say a little deeper bit of the color. So a little bit of our dialyte and yellow oxide, a bit of red and stuff in here. And push some of that color through. We're going to put some leaves in, but just give some more volume of color, difference color through. I'm watching the color and see that color's right into his cheek right there. I always watch color. That's why I love teaching color theory, and color theory, I feel, is the most important thing that an artist studies. And um, I had one student that wrote me, do I really need to study color theory? I studied it 20 years ago. <laughs> I am constantly studying color theory. I, I taught my very first color theory class in 1986, and I've learned so much more from that every single year in studying. Color theory is something that you study your entire life if you're an artist, you know. And uh, so I was just like, oh, yeah, you do. So I'm going to take some of this nice pine green right up into those oranges and stuff. And see, it makes a soft green that goes right with everything I'm painting because it's got the colors of everything that I'm painting there. Let's try not to avoid the bird so much there, Dave. Go right into that bird a bit. Let's go back here. Push in some soft ghost flowers so all my students can go ghost, ghost leaves. I just love your ghost leaves. Yeah. I'm going to put a little red into my green up here. You can use that for negative painting and start to drive more, more contrast right up here towards the center where we want to drive more contrast into this painting. Here, there. Now do we want to cover up just a bit of his legs? Yes, we do. And so a little bit of that red, what it does to the green is it grays it down and it darkens its value a bit but it grays it down and uh, creates more contrast now you can use that even right here as a little shadow stroke a little negative painting around the blossom edge itself there to uh, soften it out you could use it like a little shadow here sometimes a little vein line sometimes I'll do dark vein lines sometimes I'll do light vein lines you know, I, I switch off back and forth because I'm tricky. You got to watch it. I, I just don't, I, I try so much, guys, to change off a lot of what I do all the time so I don't get into a habit. I'm a left brain painter and I will slide into a habit really easy. So if you're like me, we try to change up. We try to constantly change the way we, we do things so that we don't get into a habit. And that's a, that's a toughie. We can do it, you know. Left brain painters can be great painters. We can do it, you know. It's, uh, but it, it takes a, a bit more, takes just a bit more concentration. Or for me, it's taken a lot more uh, techniques. I've had to really, um, I had to broaden my techniques, and and so I can change up a, a lot more, a lot easier. Let's just push some of this out. 
push some of this out here. Blur that out just a bit. Kind of like that. I could have um, a bit more. Yeah, let's put a bit of pink. But a bit more working of my lights and stuff out here. Just an edge or two more. Of these fading away right here. If I'm going to leave the board this size. Sometimes, you know, I've had it where, oh, I like everything, but then the negative area of the painting was called the negative space out here is too big, and so I just cut the board off, <laughs> you know. There's all kinds of ways you could do that, but it, we shouldn't do that too much. But see, I like that. Picked up some of the green. Boy, that just, isn't that pretty? And through there, that works. So we'll drop a bit of that. Don't, don't forget, you can just do little semi-round balls for the unopened blossoms, too. Now let's pop in a little more light, warm and light, right up here towards the front. Now I'm going to stroke right into some of that green. So it pulled that green in. That makes it look like you know what you're doing. Gives you a little bit of transparency look to it. It's kind of pretty there. And I'm not going to do that on every single blossom. I'm just now focusing in on the blossoms that are up here around the bird to start to give these here a little more interest so that everyone likes these blossoms more than what they like the ghost blossoms to the outside. So <laughs> that's my goal here. Push into that, pick up a little green there. A little bit of that color movement in there. There we go. Let's turn one. Get back to my pink here. Let's just turn one like that. Little bits back here. So, a bit heavier right here. That'll turn that blossom. And and I, I do that a lot of times. I, I rock and I call it rock and roll. I rock and roll my blossoms and the, the shapes as I'm out to turn and pivot and get them going different directions so that they add some more interest. Now, a good impressionist will come out here and just hit another little petal or something out there. You don't have to have, you know, even if you go, those of you that, you know, study right along with me, it's, um, you know, Pettit, you know, Eugene Pettit, you know, the... 19th century French painter does a lot of this stuff, you know, just little marks. And I love it. And I loved how Couchois did it. And here, pick up, pick up just a bit. Now, let's, let's carry his color because he's a bit isolated here. But don't worry, we're professionals. We can fix that. Let's carry his reds down into the centers here. And that will help carry the red now through the painting. So I always paint lots of little blossoms. And you know what? There's millions of blossoms out there with all kinds of colors on them. So I use my blossoms. And it just, you know, it was like uh, when I first started painting Hindelope and the lovely style of Hindelope and painting back in the middle 1980s. Um, they always, I always use the center blossoms of their little, their little block, you know, their little five petal flower, the centers of them to help move my color around my design a bit. And it's very true. Now, the other thing that you can do, which would be really great with this bird, is you can give little red berries too, you know, so, and, and sometimes I would put those into a little thing. So you can put some in there or, or just any kind of just like little red touches, like these are little red berries, you know. But you can paint more specific red berries. I'll do that sometimes. But we're getting a lot of interest um, to the centers here by the, uh, to the red, by just these little blossom centers. But don't forget you can add like little berries or all kinds of stuff, you know, here with that. And then I'll take some of the, I'll start out first with a nice orange because he has orange in him. So I'll do an orange first, light, right around, especially right around the, 
the bird here. Nice orange. So I, as I'm putting this on, what I'm doing is I'm thinking through my bird colors, right? So, you know, I mean, these are, you know, I'm always a big advocate of if you make a color, move a color. So you have a primary color that, I mean, this is pure color theory, and this is why you should study. You, so you express a color, then you accent that color to carry out. So you get better harmony and better movement of that color through your painting. Now that's color theory. That's the rules of color theory. Things I've been teaching for 30 some years, 35 years, and I, I love it. But you see that the real main difference is you know, it's like, okay, well, you know, uh, blue and yellow make green. Do I need to study more color theory? Yes, because today's artists, contemporary painters, use colors differently than we did back in the Middle 80s. And if I didn't keep studying it, I wouldn't know it. So I study a lot of these colors. Um, you know, I used to be, part, when I was really more of a, you know, I, I worked a lot as an interior designer, interior colorist. And I've been a color consultant for you know paint companies, all different kinds of paint companies. But we used to have a color, we have a color board that was in New York, and I was part of that for a number of years. And we set the colors for the industry on three and five year cycles. And so we always knew, you know, have you ever noticed how all these new colors come out, and then all the manufacturing, all the towels, all those colors change same time? Yeah, because these companies all subscribe and they all talk to each other to a, what's called a color marketing group. And they set these colors, but you know, it's theory. It's all color theory. What you do, what's going to happen, and you know, you never stop studying. I use color, color rules, color theory different today than I did 30 years ago. Boom! See a little bit of that yellow, little haunts of yellow right here, and that bang, little little spark of life, just boom, right up in there, right around the side, closest to the bird. Just use the corner. Tap, lift off, push it down, lift off the corner of that brush, and then then fade it away. Get it ghosty. I forgot to do that flower back there. You guys didn't tell me that. Forgot to do that. You can push a little bit of that if you're going to do berries or just move that color around. Let's put a little bit more right into here. Right on that side closest to the bird. We'll just push a bit of that. See, it gives a nice little bit. I mean, I could, I could, uh, as soon as I fix this other back flower here, let's push a bit more red. Let's push that around just a bit ghosty. Softer little yellow right there. That's all that about that needs. See, that sits back there nice. So see, it's a lot softer. It's not as heavy in color as it is up here. Okay, And so that sits back pretty nice there and a few little colored dribs and drabs those some of those greens and stuff now I could have just now this is where if I'm painting completely contemporary like if I was going to go completely contemporary with this I'd put a little bit of texture up in the front up here just smaller touches of texture I don't want to lose that that center transparency there but just a little bit on that side forces these maybe we'll do the Trinity here one more here I love to design on the Trinity too so there's lots and see that's what I that's what I do you know I like I've told you in so many other classes guys I uh, I'm not a creative person I had never been up now my mom famous artist is she's right brain she can just go and this stuff just comes out and I would just like how do you do that I had to learn rules and I had to learn techniques and I feel that I'm a pretty good left brain artist because I can follow these techniques and I just mix them all up you know um, and I, I just love the experimenting of it and um, and you can do that you know this is why you know, always people tell me all the time oh I, I can't paint, you know, I've never been an artist. I know that feeling. I know that feeling very, very well. And yes, you can paint. You, you know, some of us are naturally born with talent. 
that happens. But I don't really consider it talent. I consider it that you have an easier time learning a specific thing than other people because you're pro and you can you can understand those concepts and grasp those concepts a lot faster. But it doesn't mean you can't learn. There's nothing I've been afraid of in painting. I've always been able to try some. You know, I'm willing to try anything. I'll do it. Okay, so now, remember what I, those of you in the S105, the, I mean, excuse me, S101 bird class, one of the things we do at the end, I always say that I always like to go back and revisit my blue sky. Sometimes I put it in heavier, sometimes I put it in lighter, sometimes I just look at the, the mark, sometimes a little bit more of a streak here, and... Uh, I always like to go through and clean up the edges, maybe pull through the design just a bit, through some of the painted objects, clean up, and sometimes I'll blur the edges, sometimes I'll come right in here, right up next to that beak, we'll clean up, get a nice found edge right around his head there like that pops him forward just a bit more and uh, that's all up to you sometimes I'll just streak see I love that little streak I'll streak just a bit over the edges push those edges back sometimes I'll take this let's darken it back let's add a little extender let's be brave and just pull that right through a big brush would probably be better Dave and quicker and more casual here I just like that see boom yeah and you get some nice stuff like that going that increases the price now the um, other thing is you can take some of this blue like this and this can can become an accent good color theory this can become an accent for other like little blossoms and little things out here. So your blossoms turn from the real warm yellow pinks and onto the outside edges, especially out here with the ghosts and stuff. They, uh, let's warm this one up just a bit more. Shows up just a touch more. There. And just And see those crossing, those working up colors. A little bit of blue onto this one back there. But as they go back, they do that and makes them kind of nice. I could use a bit of this blue right back up here, just kind of fading away. And I think that that's a pretty nice painting. This um, green stops just a bit here quick. So let's just add a bit of that trailing off a bit more here. Trailing off on this side as well bit more. You could put some lighter green strokes in there, you know, but uh, it's up to you. Here, boom. Little pettit marks there. There we go. I think that's pretty good here. I'll expect, uh, I will expect some, I love your ghost flower comments. Okay, guys, okay. So you can see it. So we painted, so I painted this whole cardinal here, but without the additional white into that, because it causes it to go pink. So you have to think about your colors uh, prior. So with a lot of the, the other ones we've done, we've done a premier coup, which is working the darks, half tone lights up. Now what we did is totally reverse. We started with the lights, and then I'll jump to the darks, and then start back up that way, encroaching in on that lighter undertone color, which is the yellows, and that helps me stay very red. Does that make sense? And light, and no pink, no pink. Think about that for roses, too. It works on roses as well. But you can do pink underpainting and paint on top. That's another technique, okay? Lots of other te techniques. All right, so don't forget we have, um, we're starting up the Come Paint With Us uh, next month. I had to, we had to push it back a month. Because of all of this COVID stuff, you know, we've, 
our main shop and supplier and stuff supply of the paint and stuff has been running out and our paint is manufactured in Australia for us from Dervan, one of the oldest acrylic companies in the world. I just love working with that company. They make my formula f for us and uh, they, you know, they've been able to make that but you know like everything else everything in the world shut it down so there's tubes containers all that kind of stuff shut down um, and so it's coming back online so anyway we have more paint more shipments stuff coming in they'll be in the middle part of September so right around the first and stuff of September we're gonna start that come paint with us and um, it might be the second week of September we're waiting for the paint supplies to get in in other words um, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. You can read more about that going over on the JansenArtStudio.com. Okay, and this is where we're going to take you through some of you that really want to learn how to paint, learn from the proper ways. We're going to show you all different kinds of methods and how to increase your creativity and all that kind of stuff. But it's not only me, it's my daughter's painting with us there. So some of you get to paint with my daughter Jessica. She is a magnificent. She has her her degree in fine art and she approaches painting just a little different than I do. Deanne, who's been uh, painting with me for over 20 years, um, and Tom A, who's been painting, and Tom A is Japanese and she's been painting with me for over 20 years. She was a pharmacist who gave up her, her entire career to become an artist and everything. So we're going to have some different perspectives, some different fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's all coming. It's all going to be free. Um, and that'll be over in Jansen Art Studio. We'll broadcast some of the lessons here on YouTube. But to be very honest with you, it's like one of the comments that I have here today, one of the comments, lady said, are you going to paint the, the hummingbird? Well, yeah, I painted the hummingbird four days ago. We're going to paint more four days ago. Sometimes you get so many videos up on YouTube and so much stuff, it's hard to find them. So we're moving everything over to Jansen Art Studio. And it's a lot easier. You can look for the playlists over there. You know, like all the 30-day rose lessons are all in one spot right there on one page. You click it, they're all right there. And uh, as we're building those pages, we'll, all the supplies I use, everything that's there, there'll be links for it and all that kind of stuff all there. So it's easier for you. So we're going to run these classes off that website where we could also put in other, you know, auxiliary things like... You know, what kind of surfaces am I painting on and, you know, the videos for, for fun. So you don't have to hunt through all of these videos on, on YouTube, okay? All right, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. hope you guys are all staying safe. And I look forward to seeing you again next time. Please click like and um, leave a comment because that helps our videos so much. And I appreciate that. We really do. Okay? All right. I'll see you guys on the next one.